As we have seen in previous lectures, the solving linear ordinary differential equations has a lot of applications uh, in the real world. Uh, they can be a little bit cumbersome to solve using uh, like in integrals and things of that nature, but uh, there are some easy techniques that we can use to solve these quickly. One of them is Laplace transform. So, today we will talk about how to use Laplace transforms to solve these types of equations. So, the definition of a Laplace transform is that the Laplace transform of some function f of t is given by the integral from 0 minus to infinity of f of t e to the minus s t dt. Uh, this is a one sided Laplace transform. So, it only goes from 0 to infinity and it includes the 0 point. So, because that is why we go from 0 minus. So, let us look at what happens when we plug in different types of functions from f of t. So, the first function we will try is a unit step. For those of you who do not know, u of s is the unit step, would be 0 or 1, it would be 0 for t less than 0 and it would be 1 for t greater than 0 and it would look something like that at t equal to 0. This is a very common function that we would normally associate with control systems. So, what happens if we have the Laplace transform of this unit step? We get the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 e to the minus s t d t and that and that equals the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus s t d t uh, and that is e to the minus s t over minus s evaluated from 0 to infinity and we plug it in e to the, e to the minus infinity would be 0 minus and e to the 0 is 1, 1 over minus s. So, that is just 1 by s. So, the Laplace transform of the step function is just 1 over s. Let us take another example. So, let us consider that the Laplace transform of an exponential e to the a t that would be given by the integral from 0 to infinity e to the s t d t. So, if, if oh sorry e to the e to the a t multiplied by e to the s t. So, if we combine that together, we get the integral from 0 to infinity e to the s uh, a minus s t d t. And that equals e to the a minus s over a minus s evaluated from 0 minus to infinity. So, when we do continue that evaluation of that integral, we end up getting um, like in the we end up getting 1 over 0 over a minus s minus um, 1 over a minus s which is simply 1 over s minus a. So, you may wonder why I got this 0 over a minus s here. We assume that the uh, s is always greater than a. So, the region of convergence of this Laplace transform is s, the real value of s that can be greater than a. Now, just in general, a can be a number or it can be a complex number as well and s in general is a complex number. 
So just, uh, so there's a region of convergence for these equations that we should be mindful of. So Laplace transform of e to the a t is just given by 1 over s minus a. Let us try to work out the Laplace transform of a derivative of f of t. So derivative of f of t is f prime of t is nothing but d by dt of f of t and so the Laplace transform of that would look like the integral from 0 minus to infinity f prime of t e to the minus s t dt. So, so let us take a aside for now. So what is the derivative of f of t e to the minus s t of the product of those two. So we can use the product rule of differentiation. So it is f prime of t e to the minus s t plus f of t times the derivative of e to the minus s t. And so that would be given by f prime of t e to the minus s t minus s f of t e to the minus s t. If we rearrange this, this is the term that we are kind of looking for. So if you solve for that term, so f prime of t e to the minus s t would equal d by d t of f of t e to the minus s t plus s f of t e to the minus s t. And this bracket closes there. So we can plug this back in into this in integral. What we end up getting is that would be the integral from minus 0 to infinity d by dt of f prime of t e to the minus s t plus s f of t e to the minus s t dt. So this, this differentiation and this integration, when we, when we integrate a differential, we get the whatever is inside that, evaluate it at the limits of that integral. So we would get f of t e to the minus s t evaluated from 0 to infinity plus s the integral from 0 minus to infinity f of t e to the minus s t dt. What do, what do we end up getting is that so this term is nothing but the Laplace transform of f of t And so when we plug in infinity into this, we get 0 so as this, dec this decays down to 0. And when we put in 0, we get is f of 0 uh, times 1. So it would be minus f of 0. So the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function is nothing but the product of s multiplied by the Laplace transform of the function minus an initial condition f of 0. This is a very important thing to understand that the Laplace transform of these expressions of especially derivative expressions because they show up so often it just gets transmitted, transferred or turns into an algebraic expression with an offset of the initial conditions. So if our initial conditions are 0, what it turns out is that the Laplace transform of derivative is nothing but s multiplied by the Laplace transform of the original function. Similarly, we can de derive Laplace transforms of many more functions. Here we have put a table 
of the Laplace transform of different types of functions. So we have the step responses that we saw. So the shifted steps, this is the step responses that doesn't start at 0 but at an offset. We see it will be 1 over s multiplied by e to the minus a t. We have this, the impulse response, shifted impulse responses, derivatives and nth derivatives, polynomials and sinusoids as well as exponentials. Uh, these expressions combined together and maybe with some more, we can derive directly uh, the, uh, uh, the solutions to the first order, the um, ordinary differential equations. Uh, let's take an example of how we would do something like that. Let's try to solve a differential equation using Laplace transforms. So again, let's consider a physical system such as this with a damper and a shaft with moment of inertia j that's spinning at some angular velocity omega and we apply an input torque to it. So here, if we took some of all the torques acting on that uh, sharp, we would get j omega dot and the torques would just be torque minus the damping torque equals j omega dot. So j omega dot plus b omega would equal the torque. Let us assume that this is a step input and take Laplace transforms of both sides. So j, now this is a, a derivative of omega and as a convention in this course we will use capital uh, letters for a uh, Laplace uh, variable, Laplace function. So this would be s multiplied by capital omega s, okay. So this, the capital W s is the Laplace transform of omega, the function or the angular velocity plus b times capital S equals the Laplace transform of the input torque tau S. We can factor this out now. What we ended up doing here is converting this ordinary differential equation into a uh, algebraic equation so that we can do this. So j s plus b equals tau s. So we have omega uh, w of s is 1 over j s plus b times tau s and tau s is since it is a step is nothing but 1 by s. So it is 1 over j s plus b times s. We can rewrite this as using partial fractions as a over s plus b over j s plus b. and then solve for a and b. We can use solve, uh, solve this using partial fractions. When we do that, we get that a equals 1 by b over s plus b equals minus j over j over b divided by j s plus b. And we get 1 by b s minus 1 by b times 1 by s plus b by j, okay. So this is a Laplace transform of this function and we could, um, so if we want to get the original function or the time dependent value of this function, we have to take the inverse Laplace transform of this. So the, so the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over b times s minus 1 by b times 1 over s plus b by j. The Laplace transform has a property that it is linear. So we can split these up into two different parts and the constants can also be removed outside the Laplace transform. So here 1 by b 
the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by s minus the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s plus b by j. So, we can look at back at our table to figure out what are the inverse Laplace transforms of these two terms. So, we have 1 by b, the inverse Laplace transform is simply uh, of 1 by s is just the step function u of t minus the inverse Laplace transform of this function is uh, e to the minus b by j t and this function will only exist at t greater than 0. So, we can also multiply this by u of t here. So, we have 1 by b 1 minus e to the minus b by j t times u of t. This means that instead of solving complicated integrals, we just write down a, the polynomial function for omega and then take the inverse Laplace transform of that polynomial to go, go back into the time domain to get the time dependent uh, angular velocity. This method is used quite a bit by uh, control engineers to solve these equations and we will um, uh, do more complicated equations uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.